When evaluating a trend over time, we are often interested in projecting forward in time. Here we have electricity consumption data for various buildings across the university. We have complete data spanning from fiscal year 2012 to fiscal year 2015. If the current trend continues, how much electricity will the university consume in the year 2025? In order to calculate a future value, we first need to describe the rate at which the variable has been increasing or decreasing over some period of time for which we have data. This rate of change is called the average annual or periodic growth rate. The average annual growth rate describes the rate of change in some variable, such as electricity consumption, between two time periods for which we have data. In order to calculate the average annual growth rate, we're going to use the following equation. In this equation, V2, or excuse me, V1 stands for the first time period or time 1, which is, in this case, 2012, the first year for which we have data. V2 is the value at time 2, or in this case, 2015, the last year for which we have data. N is the number of years or periods between V1 and V2, which in this case is 3 years. So, we're going to set up the equation here in Excel to calculate the average annual growth rate, and we'll say that r is going to be equal to this equation. So the first thing we need to do is to divide the value at time 2 by the value at time 1. So we're going to take the value in 2015, divide it by the value in 2012, and then we're going to raise the entire thing to a, a fractional exponent. So when you use exponents in Excel, or when you want to raise a value to a power, we use the hat symbol. Uh, on most keyboards, it will be above the, letter, the number 6. So you hold the shift key and press the 6 to put the hat symbol in. And then we're going to put um, in parentheses this fractional exponent, which is going to be 1 over the number of years over the for the time period that we're looking at, which in this case is 3 years. Incidentally, the when you use, when you um, raise a value to the power of a fractional number, you are essentially taking the nth root of that number. In this case, 1 over 3, the power of 1 over 3, is essentially taking the cube root of the value. Okay, then we're going to subtract this value from 1, and then we have hit enter, and we have our value. So what this shows us uh, first of all, the fact that it's a negative number tells us the rate is decreasing over time, which is not surprising because we look at the graph and it's clearly apparent. Um, the number is a decimal rate, but we can interpret it very simply as saying it's approximately negative 1.6% per year. So in other words, electricity consumption at the university appears to be declining by an average rate of 1.6% per year. The question is, at this rate, how much electricity will the university consume in the year 2025? So in order to calculate a future value, we're going to use the following equation to calculate the value at time 2. In this case, V1, or the period of time 1, is the value at 2015, the date from which we are, going, we are projecting the values forward in time. V2 is time 2, is, two, is the value in the year 2025, the future date for which we want to calculate a value. R, which is the annual growth rate, which we just calculated. And N is the number of years or periods between V1, which 2015, and V2, 2025, which is 10 years. So we're going to set up this equation also right here. Call it value at time 2. So just to make it clear, I'll put V2025 and again we'll put in the equation. So here the first step that we're going to take is we're going to take the value at time 1, which is in this case the value at 2015, so that's the year from which we're projecting forward. And we're going to multiply it times the um, 1 plus the average uh, 
annual growth rate, which we calculated here, close off the parentheses, and then raise the entire thing to the power of n, which is the number of years uh, that we're projecting forward in. So this, again, is 10. So I hit Enter, and we see our future value, in this case, the future value of electricity consumption. Let me format it a bit so it's more readable. So in the year 2025, if the current annual average rate continues, we should expect that the university will consume about 2.2 million kilowatt hours of electricity. This is incidentally less than we we're consuming in 2015. In fact, it turns out to be about 380,000 kilowatt hours less than we consumed in 2015 if it continues at the current rate. We might also be interested in calculating the percent change over time. Oops, eventually I'll get it. <laughs> And the percent change is simply the value at time 2 divided by the value at time 1, that last value, minus 1. And then the whole thing multiplied by 100. And we'll see that between 2015 and 2025, we expect the electricity consumption to drop by almost 15% during that 10-year time period. So we've essentially now projected the value of electricity consumption to the year 2025 based upon the trend in consumption since 2012. So the last question is, how can we show this declining consumption over time on the graph to show it visually? So imagine then that we want the graph to show not just the current values, but kind of extending forward in time the way that we've calculated that. Well, we can do that pretty simply. So in order to calculate the values of electricity consumption for the intervening years between 2015 and 2025, we're going to use the same formula, knowing that the only part of the equation that needs to change is the value that we use for n, or the number of years, uh, between our year time one and the next succeeding year of interest. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to set up some data that will allow us to substitute in the values that we need. So I'm going to put in a, a row here for calendar years 2016 oops yep no, that's right 2017 and now that I've got two in there I can actually just copy over to capture the pattern out to 2025 and then in this lower value, I'm, this is where I'm going to calculate the n value, the number of years, which is really simply just taking this, the year of interest, and then subtracting from 2015, which is always going to, which is going to remain our, our starting year. So then we can just copy over this formula until we end up at 2010, or 25, excuse me, and we can see that that's 10 years. So this will be how we substitute in that value. So I'm going to copy over this formula. But um, notice that I don't want um, the reference cells for the time at year 1, which is the value at 2015, to change. And I don't want the value for the growth rate, which is over here in this cell, to change either. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to insert these dollar signs in the equation, which tell Excel to keep those values, to keep that reference um, exact. So it won't change the relative cell reference when I, when I copy over the formula. Oops dollar sign. I put it in front of the column letter as well as the row number so that neither of those will change. And I'll just enter so they take. It doesn't change the formula here, but now I can um, copy that formula and then come over here and I can paste the formula. Okay. And the last thing I want to do is I'm going to change this formula slightly, and I'm going to, instead of saying typing in the direct number 10 here for the, for the n value, I'm going to refer to this value down here. So it will substitute in the appropriate um, uh, number of years for that particular year of interest. So I hit Enter, and that takes. And then the last step is I'll just grab that little square in the lower right corner of the cell and drag it backward this way. 
and it will copy the formula into this into those neighboring cells. And now we have the values for every year between 2015 and 2025 using the same average annual periodic growth rate and the same formula. So now I have my data lined up. Now I can add it to my graph very simply. I right click on my graph, choose select data. I'm going to change the series that I'm using for this data using the different series values. So I'll click on this. Instead of just going from 2012 to 2015, I'm going to click and drag, grab all the way to 2025, hit enter. That takes. And then last thing, I'm going to edit the horizontal x-axis labels so that we can see all the years that we are dealing with here. And I'm going to from B2 to O2 and hit OK. And now you can see in my graph that I have the actual uh, electricity consumption values in the beginning and then projected forward. And you can see how the trend declines over time. There we've projected the value of electricity consumption to the future, and we can see how that change will happen over time. Clearly, this is a linear assumption, and it assumes that things will stay constant, which is probably unlikely. But nevertheless, given the data that we do have, we can make a reasonable estimate for the future and show that graphically.